Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. This month, we're gonna be exploring the theme of chance. My name is Alyssa, and I'm gonna be your facilitator for today. So when we think about this bigger theme of chance, what does this make us think of? What kinds of risks are we used to taking or not taking? What are chances that we've taken at school or in our after school activities that maybe have made us feel a little bit scared or a little bit outside of our comfort zone? What kinds of things have we tried that we didn't really know if we were gonna be good at or not good at? So chance is all about taking risks and about trying new things. And I love taking chances and taking risks because even when I make mistakes or even when I try things and they don't work exactly as I hoped they would or exactly as I planned, chances help me to learn and they help me to see the world in a different way and to maybe end up making something or trying something that puts me in a place that I might not have ended up in if I hadn't taken that chance. So really, Life is all about taking chances and about trying new things. So I invite you today to take some risks with me, to make something that maybe is a little bit different than anything that you've ever made before, um, and to see where it takes us as we explore together. So today the theme is taking playful risks. So what you'll be needing, uh, if you're following along with me today, um, is some paper. And this paper can be directly from your recycling bin. 
It can be paper from a notebook that you have, anything that you've got that you can use, cut up, and um, mark today. The second thing you'll be needing is a pair of scissors. Now, if you are using scissors today, make sure that you have permission from an adult to use the scissors. And if not, then see if you can make along with someone today who can help you use the scissors. Thirdly, we'll need some mark making tools. So a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark on a paper. It could be a pencil, a pen, um, it could be anything as silly as mud or um, Play-Doh, something that will leave a mark on a piece of paper. The last thing that you'll need is some dice, because like I said, we'll be taking some chances and seeing what happens in our art making process today. So take a moment to gather the things that you need and to prepare your space. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is a piece of paper, a mark making tool, um, I'm using my green pen here to start, but you can use a pencil or any mark making tool in any color uh, that you want. And we're also going to use our dice. As you can imagine, there's going to be some chance involved in whatever we make, because as soon as we enter a dice into our game, something different is going to happen. So let's see how this dice can surprise us today. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the dice and the dice, depending on what I roll. So here I rolled a four. The dice is going to tell me how many edges the thing that I'm going to draw is going to have. So I'm going to be drawing some shapes. What are some shapes that have four edges? So maybe you've thought of a square, a rectangle, a diamond, all of these shapes have four edges. So I could draw one of those shapes, or I could try to make a shape of my own that has four edges and surprise myself a little bit with what it ends up looking like. So here we go. Maybe I can start with one edge there on my piece of paper. Go all the way down. Have another edge that goes way over there. And then into the middle and over. Now, what I've made here almost looks a little bit like an arrow. Like if I were to add the rest of the arrow there, it looks like it's going this way. Or maybe it looks a little bit like a paper plane or like a bird. This new shape could turn into all kinds of different things. For now, it's just sort of an interesting shape that I've made that has four edges. What kind of shape did you make? Does your shape have an interesting look to it? Is it a square, a rectangle, or a diamond? Or is it something a little bit different? A little bit surprising even. Okay, I'm gonna roll my dice again. This time I've rolled the number five. So I'm again gonna make a shape that has not four, but five edges to it this time. Let's see what happens. This time I'm gonna start at the bottom of my page, and go all the way up, I'm gonna go way out, and then I'm gonna actually gonna go all the way back again. Now I have one, two, three, four, and down. All right, so what I ended up making here actually kind of looks like a star, but again, a little bit of a different shape than what um, how we usually draw stars. I've surprised myself a little bit with what I've made here. In a way, 
it almost looks like it could turn into a character. It has a head, hands, feet. What can I make out of this interesting star that I've that I've made out of my five edged shape? Okay, I'm gonna roll my dice two more times because what I've made, what uh, because the shapes that I've made are quite large. I'm gonna grab a new piece of paper. And I'm gonna roll my dice again, and I invite you to roll one as well. If you don't have a dice, you can just use the same numbers that I'm using here if you like, um, and follow along with me. So this time I've rolled the number six. So all pretty big numbers here. Hmm, what can I do with a six? This time I think I'm gonna start in the middle here. Go way over, out, and over again. So I'm going to have one edge, two, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now that is an interesting shape. This is a shape probably that I don't think I've ever actually made before. I've never made something quite like that. And the reason that it's turned into something so unique is because I've taken a chance. I've tried something different. What does this shape look like to you? Does it look like perhaps a creature that is going to eat another creature that I might draw on my paper? Did I just make a new kind of monster? What do I have here that I've made out of this shape? What did you make out of the shape that you created with six edges? Does yours look anything like mine? Or is what you've made completely different as well? So, with my last one, I'm gonna roll my dice one more time. And this time I've rolled the number two. So this is going to be a much simpler shape. I'm gonna try something. Goes like this. Okay, so here again, I have two edges. I've made the lines in between them curved. What does this look like to you? Could it be an eye from this side? Or could it be a leaf from this angle? What does my drawing look like? Could it be a mouth, some lips, or perhaps some kind of nut, maybe a hazelnut? What did I make? What happened when I rolled my dice and created an interesting and new shape? What did you make? Okay, so we're gonna take this idea now of creating interesting shapes and surprising ourselves by finding an, a, a new piece of paper. Um, I'm actually going to use an old cover of a magazine and probably, hmm, I'm gonna use a few old covers of magazines. You can use paper that you have that's blank you could also use um, old covers of magazines if you'd like, or any paper from your recycling bin that you have permission to play with and to cut up and mark. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to make some shapes, interesting shapes on my piece of paper. This time, I'm not gonna use my dice. 
but I am going to make kind of random lines around my paper. So, for example, I'm going to make one across here. I'm going to make another one that goes across my piece of paper like that. Maybe one right down the middle from top to bottom. And I'm going to keep going and making different lines so that eventually there's all kinds of little shapes inside of my paper. And I'm going to invite you to do the same thing. So have some fun as you draw lines on your piece of paper. Surprise yourself in how big or small the lines are. And let's see what kinds of shapes that we can make out of our um, paper uh, our paper project here today. All right, here I go. do with all of these new shapes that I've just created on my pieces of paper um, is I'm going to cut them up and create a whole bunch of smaller pieces of paper or smaller shapes. So um, at this point you're welcome to cut up your piece of paper um, or ask permission from an adult um, so that they can cut it for you or with you. All right, here we go. different shapes now um, that I can play with in my activity and this is going to be really fun to experiment with because I have all kinds of shapes again that aren't exactly um, shapes that we see every day so this one has for example one two three four five edges to it but it's not exactly a pentagon, which is the shape that we often see that has five edges. It's just a little bit of an abstract piece. I have other ones that look a little bit more like columns. I have some that actually do resemble or do look like uh, shapes that we see frequently. So here I have something that looks like a triangle. I have some shapes and pieces that turned out really tiny, super small, some that turned out quite large, like this one here, this big piece of paper that has one, two, three, four, five edges, but ended up being really big in size. What kinds of shapes did you end up with? Do you have some that are really small and some that are really big? Some that have lots of different angles and then other ones that have less angles? What kind of a collection of pieces of paper do you have in front of you now? As you can imagine, we're going to make something with these pieces of paper and these shapes that we've just made. And to continue with this idea of taking risks, taking chances, we are once again going to take some risks together. 
So what can we make here? We already know that we're gonna make something that isn't gonna be exactly how we expect, isn't gonna look or be shaped um, like what this thing uh, might be shaped as in real life. But that's exciting because we're gonna make something entirely new here. So to help us with this next part of our activity, I have a bunch of hidden letters here. Now, underneath each one of these pieces is a different letter, and I have no idea what they are. So, um, as you're following along with me, you can either follow the activity by using the letters that um, I'm going to uncover and show you, or you can use um, your own set of letters um, by writing out the alphabet, cutting up each, each letter of the alphabet and then turning them upside down. So if you wanted to make your own pieces, that's a way uh, where you could do that. But if not, you can follow along with me um, and make by using the same letters as I'm going to be turning over. So how we're gonna play this next game and how we're gonna do this next activity um, is that each time that I turn one of these letters over, I'm gonna try to make something that starts with that letter. So, for example, I'm gonna turn over one of these and it's gonna be our first letter. So, what I have here is the letter P. What words start with the letter P? I could use the word park. I could think of the word, I can think of the word pup. I can think of the word play. I can think of the word plant. What are some things that start with the letter P that we could try and make today? So I think that I'm gonna go with the idea of plant. You can also try and make a plant with the shapes that you have, or you can make something entirely different uh, that starts with the letter P, or that starts with um, a letter that maybe you have in front of you as well, if you've decided to use your own set of alphabet letters. Okay, so thinking of the word plant, I've got so many things here. I'm gonna see what I can make. So first I think I'm gonna put my plant um, on the ground. I'm gonna imagine that this piece here is the ground. And I think my plant here is going to have a little stem. It's gonna be growing out of the ground here. And my plant is going to have some triangular leaves. Oops, this one is a little bit curved. Okay. And I'm gonna add another little triangular leaf there. Maybe another little triangle there to be, maybe this is a leaf that's on one of the little branches. Add another one. This almost looks like a succulent or a cactus, doesn't it? Add another triangle there. I think I'm going to go with the idea of a cactus. Add a little bit more body to it. It's going to be spiky from all sides. Let's see. What else do I have here? Okay, there we go. So then if I wanted to put my new plant here, maybe on a background, so it's a little bit easier to see all of the different parts.
So I know that this is looking a little bit different than it did before, but again, that gets me excited because every time that I move it, it's going to be like taking a chance, taking a risk. The pieces might move and, and make my plant look like something different. So what I've created here is what looks like a succulent or maybe even a little bit of a tree with no leaves on it. What does this look like to you? Does the middle part look like a trunk? Do the triangles that I have sticking out of the trunk look like branches or look like leaves? What does my picture look like? How about yours? What did you end up making with your pieces of paper? Does yours look like an interesting kind of plant? What did you make? All right, so I'm gonna disassemble my plant creation to make space for a new piece that I'm gonna make now. So this time, what I'm gonna make is gonna start with the letter D. What words start with the letter D? Some words that come to mind are dog, diaper, drag, dirt, doorbell, door, um, drapes, uh, dragon. So all these words are pretty fun and exciting. And I think that the one that I'm gonna go with is dragon. So again, if you want to make a different word that starts with the letter D, you can make a different word. If you have a different letter that you're going to be making with, you can use that different letter to get you started. Or if you want to make a dragon as well, but using the shapes that you have, you can make your own dragon and, and we'll see um, what we end up making and how our dragons are similar or different. Okay, here I go. Okay, here's my dragon. What kind of a creature did you end up making? Did you make a dragon too? How does your dragon look like in comparison to mine? Is it bigger or smaller? Is it a different color? A slightly different shape? So I've made here my dragon and given it some wings, given it a long tail. And then out of its head here, out of its mouth, I've made fire. Now, I know that my dragon and the fire don't look exactly like how we would normally draw a dragon or how we would normally create fire, but I've taken a chance with my shapes and with my pieces and I've made something entirely different, something new and interesting. What did you make? Did something that you created surprise you? All right, so once again, I'm gonna disassemble what I've made, my little dragon character. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up my third and last letter, so. Let's see, I'm gonna get this one. So I have the letter C. What words come to mind when we think of the letter C? I think of cat, castle, cabin, coat, um, cocoon, 
cuddle, cheek, chance, um, chipmunk. Hmm. There are lots of different words that start with the letter C. But what should I make today? I think that the last thing that I'm going to make today is going to be a cat. So once again, I'm going to use the shapes that I have here. And I'm going to try to make a cat as best as I can with the things that I have here with me. If you want to make a cat along with me, you can make a cat. If you'd like to make something else that starts with a C, you can also do that. All right, here we go. Okay, here's my cat. Um, what I've made is a cat that looks like they're almost peeking out from behind um, a wall or from behind a door because I've created a bit of a longer neck connected to their body here. Um, and it looks like they're looking right at me or maybe right in the, the opposite direction. I have its whiskers that come out on both sides and two little pointy ears at the top. What did you end up making? Does your cat look similar or different from mine? Did you make something entirely different that surprised you? What do you like about what you made? How is it different than anything that you ever made before? I've never made a cat like this before. I've drawn a cat many, many times, but because I normally draw a cat rather than make a cat out of different pieces of paper that have different shapes, the cats that I make very rarely look anything like this. So I'm excited about what I've made here. While I'm going to um, clean all of this up, and I'm going to disassemble what I've made because one of the rules that we have in our Art Starts Explorers program is that nothing is for keeps. So I'm not going to keep what I've made, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to keep something that I've learned today with me that I can keep in mind for the next time that I make something, whether it's for keeps or not for keeps. So what did I learn today? from trying new things and making new characters? What happened in my makerspace that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't taken these chances? If I hadn't rolled a dice? If I hadn't chosen letters that led to um, creations um, and I hadn't left it up to chance? What would have happened? My, my, um, creations today would have looked really, really different. So what I learned today is that when I take a chance, when I make something um, with shapes that I don't normally play with, it actually leads to some things that I think look pretty cool and that are really interesting to look at. So the next time that I make I'm going to make sure that I try using different shapes um, in, my, in my making before I, I go straight to um, making things in the usual shapes that I would make them in. For example, normally a cat face that I would draw would be a little bit more circular. But here, my cat shape 
and its face is actually quite angular. There's all kinds of different edges around it. I wouldn't normally draw that. So I'm going to try making in the future with different shapes and surprise myself in what I end up creating uh, when I take those risks. Okay, so I'm going to leave my camera on while I clean up my space and you're welcome to uh, clean your space along with me. And I'm going to disassemble what I've created so that my space is ready to make next time.